hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for coming back today we're going to be talking about the 13 ways to deal with or manage an emotionally detached parent now I did a video on this on Sunday and it really did good I was very pleased to see um, the reviews and the watch time and just how much energy you guys put into the comment section um, some of you contacted me behind the scenes via email via, via tweets as well and so you know when I see all of that action on a video it reinforces to me that you guys have gotten exactly what you want so I want to keep that momentum going a lot of you asked me on Sunday in the chat box, in the live chat, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. You asked me, what do I do to deal with this? Like I have this emotionally detached parent. I know they're dysfunctional, but how do I manage it? And so in today's video, I'm going to highlight just that. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. For all of you who are subscribed, thank you so much. And for those who are new, I encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know it's premature and I've had some of you say, why would I hit the subscribe button? And I don't know who you are. Well, let me tell you why. Because I think we are a pretty welcoming and validating environment. And I think you're going to get a lot out of the videos here. You get a chance to, you know, ask me questions and communicate with me behind the scenes. You also get a chance to make suggestions on videos. So I'm always listening. My ears are always perked up, so I welcome you to subscribe. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Tamara, and I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist. I'm also licensed in mental health, and I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults who are dealing with trauma right in my private practice. Let's jump in. I'm gonna go ahead and post the video right up here, Emotionally Detached Parents, which I did on Sunday, but I want you to watch this video all the way to the end first, then go back and check that out because I think it's going to make a little bit more sense as to, you know, what's going on. Um, why is this an issue? Why do parents behave this way? How do I get into, um, you know, um, this kind of a parent child dynamic with my parent? How did I get here? Why? What is it? So you're going to get that in that video. But in today's video, I'm going to give you some suggestions, at least 13 of them on how to manage these kind of parents. Now, um, you know, when I used to work with primarily caregivers um, and parents, um, uh, not so much within the family unit, but more so just the parent and the caregiver and the guardian, um, I saw a lot of emotionally detached parents and they had a really hard time making the relationship between, you know, them and, and their child, uh, biological, adopted, step half, whatever. Um, they had a really hard time making it work. And, you know, one of the reasons you'll see in the previous video is because they just don't have the capacity. They don't have the capacity to be the kind of parent that you may want them to be. It may seem logical to you. It may feel common sense to you. Uh, but the reality is that, you know, they lack the ability. They lack the skills needed to be the parent that they need to be. So you're likely to experience a lot of psychological and emotional warfare when it comes to them, for lack of a clinical term, you know? You're gonna feel battled on every level. So um, I wanna give you some tools on how to manage this. Okay, so let's just jump in. The first tool that, and this is the hardest, this is the first tool that I suggest, is to accept where you are and accept what you have. That's so, so hard, right? You know, um, there are five stages of grief and the five stages of grief have um, really helped a lot of my clients make sense out of why it's so difficult for them to move from point A to point B when they are grieving, suffering, or missing someone that they have lost, you know? And the five stages of grief really can help you help you understand and help me explain to you um, just how difficult it can be to accept anything that you feel is a loss. And you may feel like having an emotionally detached parent is a loss, and that's okay. It is a loss. Um, so you're likely to go through the five stages. Uh, there's denial, there's anger, there's depression, there's bargaining, right? Uh, you may even bargain with God. God, if you just get them off their sick bed, I promise I'll love them better, right? That kind of bargaining. Um, or I'll donate more or go to church more if you just give me a second chance. Okay, that's bargaining. But then the fifth one is acceptance. And, you know, you may find yourself stay in denial for a couple of years. You may feel yourself be angry and depressed at the same time. You may bargain and be angry at times, right? 
and you may not ever accept or you may come to a place where you do accept it, but it's going to take some time, you know. Um, so those stages can be experienced in many different ways at many different times. Um, but you will likely experience these stages as you come to terms with the fact that you have this particular kind of parent, you know. Um, so when I say, you know, accept what you have and accept where you are, that's really hard. So you're going to go through those many stages, if not more, um, of loss and of grief before you get to the stage of acceptance. And maybe some of you have already gotten to acceptance. I encourage you in the comment section below, let us know. Have you gotten to that stage? And if so, what brought you there? You know, um, so that's number one. OK, I think the first step towards healing is acceptance always in some form. It doesn't have to be OK. I see what I have. I'm going to go ahead and just move on with my life. That's not what I mean. I just mean come to terms with it, be aware of it, embrace it, know it's there, be willing to move forward, you know? Um, the next thing is make a move. Now, once you finally recognize that, okay, I have this kind of parent, the next thing that I encourage you to do is make a move, right? And that may be blocking their phone number if they're harassing you, refusing to respond to multiple emails that are dominating and overwhelming and overbearing, right? Um, that might include responding to only a select few of texts, text messages and not, you know, being really engaged. Um, making a move may also be moving to another state if that's always what you've wanted to do, but you held back because somebody wanted you to stay or you needed, you know, to stay where your parent is, you know, um, setting up that boundary or that defense wall so that you are not penetrated in a way that's going to make you feel overwhelmed and hurt, right? Um, so there's many ways that you can make a move. But once you recognize what the situation is, the second step is to make a move. Now, the third step is, you know, learn to grow. And what I mean by that is research things, know who this parent is, figure out what it is that they could possibly have, uh, apply a label, which is what we did in the previous video that I did on Sunday regarding this topic. We applied some labels, you know, try to gain some knowledge like you are watching this video today and you watch my video on Sunday. Um, pick up many self-help books, you know, do your own self-reflection. And in addition to that, um, maybe get into your own psychotherapy or go to your pastor or your spiritual advisor or your best friend to kind of help you process, right? So learn and grow, learn to grow as well, right? So kind of get in that mode of learning and growing, researching and making some, some sense out of what you're going through. Sometimes that can be healing, just being validated and knowing what's going on with the person that you thought was your parent okay uh, the next thing is avoid um, carrying anger I think anger erodes your soul and it has a way of eroding your morals and your values and your ethics and your motivation right because you're you're extending so much energy being angry that it's really hard to pump the brakes and say you know what uh, I need to pause here I need to not be angry I need to not confront this person it's not worth it so avoid carrying anger okay I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory I'll post one of my old video videos right up here uh, which talks about anger and it talks about dealing with someone who's angry um, so that may be helpful to you as well all right the next thing that I suggest is um, move away from fighting with them you know when you give in to fighting with this detached and emotionally immature parent you know you really are giving them your power I think you know people who are emotionally detached they have a way that they shield their heart from being penetrated by anything. So you being offended really doesn't matter. You being angry really doesn't matter. And if the parent is a narcissist, it really doesn't matter, right? Because the only reason that they're fighting with you is to be in a power struggle, is to prove something, is to, you know, you know, really prove that they're they're gonna win this thing, right? Is it really worth it to you? Probably not in the end. So avoid, avoid fighting with them. It's, it's just not worth it. Uh, they haven't been able to be the parent that you've always needed in the first place. So why expect them to not fight with you and be any different, right? So don't even give them that. Um, the next thing is, um, um, I, I think I'm going to say uh, reject negative self-talk um, and kind of getting caught up in this loop. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. And it may be helpful for me to point this out to you um, using paper um, so that you can kind of do this yourself. Um, and so that you can kind of see that, oh, you know, this may be something I can do on my own when I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. So here's what I want you to think about. Um, it is called the CBT triangle. That's what I call it. All right. And so CBT is known as cognitive 
behavior therapy. The whole idea behind that is that you take your thoughts about certain things and you examine it, right? You weigh it against reality. Is this the way that I should be looking at this situation, right? You look at how your thought influences your feelings about the situation and then influences your behavior. So when I'm in the office with clients, here's what I have them do. I have them um, and I encourage you to do it with me if you want to. I have them draw a triangle, okay? I have them write the word thoughts at, to at the top, emotions on the left, okay? And then feelings on the right. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. It's really not that deep, guys, I promise you. So here's how it looks, okay? If you can see that. And that's basically what I have my clients do. Now, here's what you want to do. You wanna add all the things that you think about the situation. You also want to add how those thoughts trigger your emotions. And then, wait a minute guys, I messed this up. And you also want to um, look at how your thoughts and feelings trigger your behavior. So let me fix this. And I'm not going to even edit this out of the video because you need to see how human I am. So here's the corrected triangle guys. That should have been behaviors, okay? So thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, not thoughts, emotions, and feelings. <laughs> It should have been thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, okay? So really what I want you to do is, um, if you're doing this by yourself or doing this with me, kind of connect the dots, right? How do my thoughts influence my feelings and how do my feelings influence my behaviors, okay? Um, so that's the thought triangle. So, you know, once you recognize, okay, I've got some negative self-talk in here. I'm saying things to myself that I should not, right? I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, she'll never love me, he'll never love me as my dad. Um, she'll never be the mom I've ever wanted her to be, so I must not be worth love. Um, you know, um, I am a loser like my father has told me. I don't deserve happiness. Whatever it is, put it under thoughts, okay? And then what do those things that you say to yourself do to your emotions? Well, it's likely to make you feel um, less than. You're probably not going to have confidence. You're probably feeling hurt, right? Add all of that under emotions. And then, you know, how do those two things, thoughts and feelings, impact what you do? Well, let's see. Well, then you start having negative thoughts, right? You start saying things to yourself that's not positive. That's your behavior. You start isolating from people. That's another behavior. You start withdrawing. That's another behavior. You start getting negative with yourself. That's another behavior. So once you can kind of create this map for yourselves, guys, it makes a little bit more sense as to why we need to control what's going on up here in addition uh, in addition to controlling what's going on in here so that we can also control our behavior okay so to keep this video short and sweet i encourage you to do this at home now um i also think that you should spend some um time reflecting on whether or not your emotionally detached parent um, kind of has created what's called a drama triangle within your family. Now, this is another triangle you might want to write down and practice or use in your own, your own time. Now, here's how this triangle goes. It's called the drama triangle because there's always a victim. The victim is most likely going to be that emotionally detached parent, you know. Um, you may feel like the victim, and yes, you are the victim, but that emotionally detached parent tends to be um, numb, selfish, and mature. So they think they're, you know, they think they're being hurt, right? So here's, here's the triangle. You have the victim at the top. You have the rescuer, okay? And then you have the persecutor. Some of you are probably thinking, man, she likes triangles. <laughs> I really don't. This is the field. It's not me. So here's how this looks, okay, guys? This is called the drama triangle. And basically what's going on here is, you know, your emotionally detached parent is going to be the victim. Uh, you're going to identify a rescuer in your family, which may be the grandmother or your dad or your sibling. And you're definitely going to be the persecutor because you're the one saying you weren't the kind of parent I needed. Um, so take some time to kind of move some roles around and see who's playing what role and kind of reflect upon that. All right. So that's my next suggestion. Reflect upon that. Reflect upon these triangles, the thought triangle. How do you negatively box yourself in with your thoughts and your feelings? And this drama triangle, how is your emotionally detached parent boxing you in 
uh, because they're pointing the finger at you as the persecutor, right? They're perse they're saying that you are persecuting them. They are blaming you. And who is the person playing the rescuer and seeming like they're doing everything right, right? So play around with those a little bit. I think that can be helpful. Now, the next thing that I suggest is spending time with yourself. I think self-reflection is extraordinarily powerful. I don't think I would be the therapist that I am or the woman that I am or the, the loving um, um, person in my personal life that I am, um, the sister that I am, the daughter, the list goes on. If I didn't spend that time alone with myself, I have to reflect. Uh, because if I don't reflect, then I don't know what's going on in here, and I don't know what's going on in here necessarily, even though there's a ton of static up there all the time. I don't know, and I can't connect my head with my heart because I'm not reflecting. And when I don't reflect, then everything in the world kind of takes up that space, and I lose touch with me. And so reflecting is extraordinarily important. That's something I try to get all of my clients to do, five and up because I think it's really, really important to just be with you. So spend some time with you. The next thing is make a map of where you wanna be in life, right? So make a map. Here's where I wanna be in the next six months. Here's where I wanna be in the next uh, 12 months. Here's, what I, here's where I wanna be in the next two years. And really be realistic about it. Don't be like, okay, I wanna be a celebrity by the time I hit 60, or I wanna be a millionaire by the time I hit 80. That's probably not realistic. But you can say something like, you know what? I think I wanna retire early. And here's how I can do it. I can meet with a financial advisor. I could really take a look at my finances and figure out how I can get ahead quicker. You know what I mean? I could use this talent, make some money here, right? So be realistic, but map out, map out where you want to be, okay? Because when you have an emotionally detached parent, you don't have that direction all the time because you don't have that parent there saying, you know what? You could do this, you could do that, you could do this. They're not there for you in that way, as you know. So um, don't be afraid to, to, to be that that leader for yourself and just say, you know what, I'm going to sit down and really map out my future. I could use it, you know. Uh, the next thing is um, seek counseling <laughs> if you need it. And, you know, I kind of chuckle at that. Uh, and, and I really wrestle with that because, you know, everybody who who titles themselves a psychologist, a psychotherapist, a psychiatrist is not a professional. And, you know, everybody who who um, uh, is on the outside of the field expects to get value just because it's a healthcare field, you know what I mean? Um, but you really have to be picky and you have to know who you're talking to and what you're looking for. You don't have to be aggressive, of course. Like, you know, I wanna see all your degrees, um, all your qualifications, that's kind of rude and that will get you terminated real quick. But I think, um, I think I'm suggesting, you know, be a little bit wise in who you are who you are seeking for help, okay? And last but not least, this is a little bit complicated, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna target this a little bit here. Um, I think you should find some way to unlearn, unlearn the social reinforcement that you have been under because of that parent. So I'm gonna unravel that a little bit. Unlearn the social reinforcement that you have been under with that parent. So what I mean is I think we learn how to function in relationships, in society, in our personal lives when we are under parents, right? Because we look to them as the guider, as the leader, I should say, right? And so we've kind of learned how to react to the world, react to others, um, how to maneuver relationships, how to engage in them. We've learned all of that from our parents. And so if you have an emotionally detached and unhealthy and immature parent, you most likely have learned some things that you probably should unravel and unlearn. So unlearn those things that you have learned or that have been reinforced by your unhealthy parent so that you can move ahead. That's the most important thing. And I think the first step in doing that again is going back through all of these tips trying all of those things and then going into your own psychotherapy to heal yourself. These are a lot of, of, of different ways that you can kind of manage where you're at. I hope they are helpful. This video is long, I know, but I wanted to make sure that you had comprehensive information. Thank you so much for being with me today in this video, guys. I encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us. I'm going to come back with the next few videos. We're going to kind of, we're going to kind of move over a little bit and not talk about detached 
uh, and immature parents. We're going to move into something else because there's a couple of requests that I've had on this channel. So uh, stay tuned for the next videos. I'll see you soon. Bye.